The next question comes from Drake Ryan. I like this question. Devin Levi, Dustin Wolf, Askroff, and Wallstead are good young goalies. Who else should we know about? And I guess I can answer this question since I watch a lot of these young goalies. And I'll start off with Lucas Dostal from the Anaheim Ducks, a guy that uh, had some very good starts this year when he got called up to the NHL, faced a lot of shots in San Diego, and kind of just emerged as someone who could potentially go out there and, you know, maybe be a number one goalie or, yeah, a number one goalie for the Anaheim Ducks. And they need that. So I do like what they've got there. Another is uh, Sebastian Kosa, a goalie at the Detroit Red Wings, spent most of the year in the ECHL, had some good opportunities in the AHL, a goalie with huge size, ton of potential, and he's still trying to learn how to use that size to his advantage in the pro game. And I think, you know, there's a, a really good potential there, especially by the time he's ready, that's when the Red Wings should be able to contend. And by then, you know, that's what you're looking for there. And another one is one that I think a lot of people are underrating right now, especially Buffalo Sabres fans. Sorry, guys. And that's Joel Hofer from the St. Louis Blues. And the reason I say that was because people were shocked he's gotten more starts than Devin Levi at the World Juniors. But, you know, just the way that, or the World Championship. But with Hofer, it's just, you know, he faced so many shots the last two years. He's got a lot of pro experience already. Looks like he could even be the number one next year um, for the St. Louis Blues. So those are the guys I'm looking at. Obviously, you look at Devin Levi, what he's been able to do. Uh, Dustin Wolf, just unbelievable in the AHL once again. Askarov, his Milwaukee Admirals have a shot to go for the Calder uh, tr uh, Calder Cup this year, and Jesper Wallstead, who was one of Sweden's goalies of the World Championship, and everything he did at Iowa. You know, this is a very good time for goalies. And you look at the kind of the last couple of years with, with Sturkin and, and Sorokin and all those guys coming through the system, Ottinger, uh, some really good goalies already coming in. Now you're seeing this next range, and you know, goalies are hard to predict. You never know what to expect, but right now there's just so many fun to watch. Yeah, it's true. It feels like more so than it has been in a while. It's sort of entering an era where there are some truly exciting goaltending prospects. I think all the ones you listed are absolutely absolutely legit. I think the Joel Hole, for example, is pretty fun because that is the sleeper, especially just with the inconsistency of, of Jordan Bennington. I think the job is there for the taking. I mean, Billy Huso already had sort of taken it before he got traded to Detroit. Uh, I wanted to offer another one that's a bit of a deeper sleeper just because he's so blocked at the moment on his team depth chart, and that's Brandon Bussey in the Boston Bruins system. He has been one of the best goalies in the American Hockey League. Uh, for the better part of the last two years, especially this year, he actually had a full sample size, 32 games played, 924 save percentage. If it weren't for Dustin Wolf just dominating the AHL, I think the Bussy would be getting more attention. Right now, of course, we know he's blocked by Lena Selmark and Jeremy Swayman at the NHL level. But going into this offseason, the Bruins, especially if they lose David Krejci, maybe Patrice Bergeron to retirement, they're going to have to make some moves to fortify their forward group. And that might include having to trade one of their goaltenders. And when you have someone as good as Bussy in your system, you can afford to trade, for example, a Jeremy Swayman. I don't know if you're going to trade Lena Selmark right after he probably wins the Vezina Trophy, uh, especially because, yes, he had a trou trouble in the playoffs, but it was more, as we found out later, because of an injury. So I think he's still safe, but it would make a lot of sense to trade Jeremy Swayman when you have your other Jeremy Swayman waiting in the wings and Bussy. So if Bussy gets to the NHL level next year, depending on what Boston does this offseason, he's a name to watch because he could have some really nice rate stats, even if he's not playing a starter's workload. But we know we've, the, the blueprint has been there for – the better part of a decade now with this entire generation of Boston Bruins. Their goalies always, always, always seem to have really strong rate stats. So don't forget about Brandon Bussey, especially if you're in a league that allows you to stash minor league players. I'm a big fan of his, you know, in a perfect world, he probably wasn't going to be starting as many games as he ended up doing, but he was an all-star for a reason. He was a guy that I think is going to just, you know, he should be in the NHL next year. And, you know, when you're looking at like, are the Bruins going to make a goalie move? You know, what if, Plus, he's the guy that gets moved. What if he's the one that's trading? I don't think so, but it's like you, you look at it and Swayman was the guy that you hoped to be your number one. You signed Allmark for a few years knowing he would likely be the number one. So the fact that they kind of got this guy for free out of college is a huge thing for them. So uh, Boston's got a very good spot to be in, I guess, with so many goalies, uh, and a lot of teams could use guys like that. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that this summer.